Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. I am your host Vortex from MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And if you are new to the channel, what we do here is release weekly videos teaching people how to produce music on their iOS device. And in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the differences between CPU, RAM, DSP, and how they relate to plugins inside of your DAW right after this. And remember folks, if you do enjoy this content, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Now there does seem to be some confusion out there among my colleagues and peers in the space about CPU and RAM and how they actually work and what they do for plugins, like how many plugins you can actually use in a session for example. And there also seems to be some confusion out there about what DSP is and how it relates to performance inside of your project. So I'm going to try to clear all that up in today's video and use this as an actual reference to be able to point back to to send to anybody who is still a little bit confused about all these technical details. So that's what we're going to do today is discuss CPU, DSP, and RAM, and how it all works behind the scenes. But there is just a quick note here, and that's that we'll be discussing all of the details today inside of Cubasis 3, which is a DAW on the iPad. Now, of course, the iPad is just a computer after all, so many of the concepts that we'll be discussing today can still be applied to the desktops like PC and Mac. All right, and now with that intro aside, let's hop right into Cubasis and start talking about CPU. Okay, so the first thing that I want to note here is both the CPU and RAM are equally important. They are both extremely important to music production in your DAW. You will need a lot more of both in order to run larger and larger projects with more and more plugins. So the first thing that I want to do is quickly explain this Cubasis 3 project that we're going to be using as a demonstration to illustrate some of these points about CPU, RAM, and DSP. So let's take a look at that now. So what I have here is a Cubasis 3 project that I created during a live stream. And as you can see, it doesn't have a whole lot of tracks here, a total of 12 different tracks. And in fact, there's not a whole lot of plugins here on each one of these tracks as well, a couple of channel strips and studio EQs. In fact, let's go ahead and get a count of the amount of plugins by reopening Cubasis 3 with this project. So we'll just close Cubasis 3 and open that right back up, and then we'll get a total count of how many plugins. So we are currently using inside of this project uh, 17 plugins we are loading inside of this Cubasis 3 project, a total of 17 plugins right now with 12 tracks. All right, so now that we have the project details out of the way, let's talk about CPU. Now, what is a CPU? A CPU is the central processing unit. This is the onboard chip inside of your computer or iPad that's going to be processing your audio in real time. Now, we're currently running a 2018 iPad here with the A12X processor. We have the one terabyte version, which gives us a total of six gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you are curious about the specs inside of your iPad, you can definitely check that out on Apple's website at apple.com slash iPad slash compare. Now, most DAWs do have a CPU and DSP meter, and Cubasis is no different. So if we take a look here, we can look at our system info tab on the far left-hand side. Now, the first meter that we have here is the CPU meter. Now, this is actually going to show the CPU usage of all of the device's cores in real time. In fact, every single one of the plugins that you're running, every single app in the background, this actually monitors the CPU for everything. And then below that, we have our DSP meter here. And we'll talk about DSP more in just a second, but just so you know, DSP stands for Digital Signal Processing, and this is going to actually show how much digital signal your CPU has to process. Now, as you can see, there really isn't any right now because it is running silent. But you can see that the CPU is still at 1%. It's not at 0% because it still takes some CPU usage to run the operating system, to run the DAW, and to run the plugins that are inside the DAW as well. You can see the CPU meter start spiking up a little bit when we do little things like opening up the insert effects or opening up the send effects or maybe even opening up a plugin. You'll be able to see the, the CPU spike there. It spiked to around 3 or 4%. And even the DSP spiked a little bit as well because there is some processing that the plugin is actually doing, even though there is nothing being played. Because it does still take some digital signal processing to have this plugin open and loaded, in addition to being loaded inside of the RAM, which we'll also talk more about in just a little bit. So if we close this plugin here and close the tab here, the DSP will go back to silent and the CPU will go back to using only 1%. All right, and now it's time for a couple of quick demonstrations. Now the first demo we're going to do is play this project for you. And what I want you to pay attention to is how much more DSP it takes as we add on more and more tracks. So as you can see here, we start out with just the three tracks and we add a fourth track here and then a fifth and a sixth and a seventh track here. 
and then even more tracks over here as we get more into the chorus. Now there's no exact formal structure to this particular track as it was created in a live stream in just about an hour or so, so just be a little bit forgiving here as to the roughness of the project. So I'm going to hit play here, and what you're going to notice is that we're going to start out at around 50, 55% DSP, and we're going to start going into the 60s here once we start reaching these tracks over here, and then eventually we will go into the 70s once we load up the rest of the tracks over here for the chorus. All right, let's hit play. Alright, so as you saw there, the DSP did start increasing as we started adding more and more tracks. So like we said, the DSP was running around 50-60% to 60 with just these three tracks in the beginning, but let's go ahead and duplicate a couple of these tracks a couple more times so that we can get higher DSP. Let's see if we can get to around 80 or 90 DSP. And now we should be at around 90% DSP once we hit play. So let's try that. Alright, so now let's duplicate this track just two more times, and we should be hitting full 100% DSP. So let's see what we got. Let's duplicate this once, and then twice more. So this is going to give us a total of 16 tracks, with our Pat Synth track that we've duplicated four times here. One, two, three, and four. So let's hit play. All right, so as you guys saw there, we in fact hit 100% DSP. So that means that we have exhausted the total amount of digital signal processing that our CPU can handle. Now let's remove these duplicate tracks and we should be able to play the project no problem. So let's just remove a couple of these again. Delete and delete. And now let's hit play. And as you can hear, we can now play the project once more. Now, just a quick note about RAM that we'll talk more about in a second here is that adding more memory or more random access memory to this iPad will not decrease the amount of DSP. So let me repeat that one more time. Adding more RAM to this iPad will not decrease the amount of DSP that my CPU has to handle. In order to actually increase the amount of DSP that I can process at once, I have to increase the CPU. Now, remember that we said that DSP and RAM are equally important, and they are but they are important for different reasons, which we'll get into more in just a few minutes. But for now, I want to get back to talking about the CPU and how it relates to plugins. Now, something important to keep in mind is that not all plugins are created equal. Some plugins, in fact, require a lot more DSP than others. Now, third-party plugins can be optimized pretty well, but generally speaking, native plugins are going to require the least amount of CPU. And when we say native plugins, what we mean is plugins that are already built into your DAW. And this is usually because the developers of the native plugins are the same developers that programmed the DAW itself. So that means that they're going to have the most insight as to what's going to make an optimized plugin run really well inside that DAW. And we can demonstrate this by loading up a couple of different plugins here. So first, for example, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this pad synth track. And what I'm going to do is change this from the Xeon synth to the native micro Luke inside of Cubasis 3. So we'll tap on micro Luke and just use the init preset. Now we'll close this out. Now, when we hit play, our CPU usage should be unchanged in that it should be around 50 to 60% when we hit play with just these four tracks here. So let's hit play. So as you saw there, we had around between 50 and 60%, spiking up to around 63 to 65%. Now, if I delete this track, let's just see what it was real quick before with just our current project. Let's hit play. So pretty much the same, spiking around 60%. So that micro loop barely added anything in there. 
Now this time, let's add a model D. So we'll duplicate that once more. And this time we'll use the model D, model D, there we go. And now let's close this out. And now when we hit play, we should be in the 70 to 80% as opposed to the 50 to 60% range. So that's almost taking a third more of the entire amount of DSP that's available just for this one plugin. So let's hit play. So you can see that adding just this one plugin took us from 50% DSP to 80% DSP with only three or four tracks loaded. So you can imagine what would happen if we actually tried to build this project with just the Model D. We would have to be freezing a lot of tracks. Now often the plugins that take the most amount of CPU resources or create the most amount of DSP is going to be reverbs and delays and tape plugins sometimes as well. Now of course this isn't always the case. There's some very very CPU resourceful delays and reverbs but generally speaking that's pretty much the case. Now that we understand how the CPUs affect the plugins inside your DAWs, let's move on to DSP. Now, as we said before, DSP stands for Digital Signal Processing. And you can sort of think of this specialized type of processing similar to how the GPUs process graphics. The GPU sort of acts like an additional CPU, freeing up resources for your CPU to process more things. And similar to GPUs, there are things called DSP chips. And these DSP chips are like GPUs for graphics, only they're specifically designed for processing audio. There are, for example, external audio interfaces out there with one, two, four, or more DSP chips to help out with processing things like effects so that your CPU doesn't have to process that and the end result is reduced latency in your recording and the ability to add even more plugins for your CPU to process. And these external audio interfaces with these DSP chips in them even have their own DSP meter. And this is going to only monitor the amount of processing that that audio interface is doing, which means that no matter how many plugins that you add inside of that audio interface, it will not affect the CPU, the internal CPU, inside of your iPad or computer. So to bring it back inside the DAW here inside of Cubasis 3, the more plugins that I have inserted on each track, the more amount of DSP that is created for my CPU to process. Adding more RAM or more random access memory will not reduce the DSP load on your CPU. What it will allow you to do is run more and more plugins in memory. But the thing about the iPad is it already has a huge amount of memory to be able to hold all of these plugins inside of its RAM. So essentially, I can hold many more plugins in memory than I can actually process in real time. Or in other words, I can hold huge amounts of plugins, but they're going to create so much DSP that my CPU can't process it all. And then right now you might be thinking, well then if adding more RAM doesn't reduce my DSP load, then what's the point of having more RAM? And of course there are a number of benefits to having more RAM. And one of those things is, like we just said, the ability to add more and more plugins into your memory at once. But the other thing that it really helps with is sample-based apps. The more amount of memory that you have, the larger the samples that you can load up in real time for your CPU to process. So basically how sample-based apps work is, whatever preset that you have loaded up, the app itself loads a number of samples into your memory, into your RAM. And depending on the speed of that RAM is how fast those samples will actually load into your memory. For example, in the old days, we had really, really slow RAM. And so presets, for example, took forever to load. When you would change a preset, it would take forever to load up into your memory. But nowadays, especially inside of the iPad, the RAM that is inside of there is extremely, extremely fast. So when you do switch presets, those samples will get loaded up pretty quickly. So again, the more amount of RAM that you have, the more amount of samples and the larger amount of samples that you can load up into your memory at once. So right about now, you might be thinking that you need the most amount of memory possible so that you can run all of those high-end sample-based apps. The iPad already has enough memory to load those apps because those apps were actually specifically designed for the limitations of the iPad. So for example, apps like Sample Tank, Pure Synth, and Decent Samples all have optimized their actual sound files to be able to load up samples really, really fast and have them still sound really, really good. So what you're going to see in the future then is as the iPad increases the amount of memory that it has available, you're going to see those sample sizes in those sample-based apps get larger and larger. But like we said already, for most cases, for most sample-based apps, the iPad can already handle it pretty well. All right, and now it's time again for our final thoughts. And if you are still rocking with us, then we just can't thank you enough for being here. And we especially can't thank those enough that are here every single Wednesday and Friday to watch our live streams and live premieres. Now, we do hope that we explain some of these technical details in a way that made sense to you as a music producer. All of this technical stuff can sort of get a little bit confusing, but once you wrap your head around it, it really can start to make sense pretty fast. And it can really help you in the future as well when deciding what hardware to purchase for your studio. But really the main takeaway here is that you're going to need a 
lot of RAM and CPU for your music production and that they're both pretty much equally important. Your RAM or random access memory is going to determine how many plugins and tracks that you can actually have in your project, and your CPU or central processing unit determines how much DSP you can actually process at once. Or in other words, how many plugins and tracks you can actually run simultaneously in real time once you hit play. And of course, if you guys ever have any questions about this stuff, definitely drop a comment down below or hit us up on any one of our socials. And if you haven't heard yet, we have just recently announced the release date of our brand new upcoming Essential Sample Pack Lo-Fi. That Lo-Fi pack will be coming out on June 30th, and then just a week after that, on July 7th, we'll begin our brand new Sample Pack contest. And this contest is going to run from July 7th for three weeks all the way through July 28th, with the final top four winners being revealed just one week later on August 4th. For all the rules, prizes, and details on how to enter, make sure to visit our website at mobilemusicpro.com contest. And of course, we always have a ton more stuff coming down the pipe for you guys, so if you do want to keep up with everything that we're doing over here at Mobile Music Pro from contests to giveaways, to sample packs, and more, definitely make sure to go to our website and sign up for our completely free mailing list at mobilemusicpro.com. And so, until next time, everybody, keep talking music, and we'll see you later. Hey guys, Vortex here, and if you're not aware yet, we do have over 100 fully edited videos now on the channel. And we make music every single Wednesday live on our iPad. Plus, we have a bunch of free sample packs, MIDI packs, guides, and more on our website at mobilemusicpro.com free. So if you are into that sort of thing, producing music on your iOS device, then definitely make sure to like and subscribe.